Hey everybody, welcome to another video. In the last one, in case you missed it, I covered how to get out of the fundamental training as an artist. So this video is for you intermediates that have a lot of experience doing art, but you'd consider yourself not at a professional level or you're struggling reaching a higher tier art. Generally with my school, the Brush Sauce Academy, I categorize the different arts into different phases. This is gonna be covering phases two and three. And I hope to be putting together some tips today that are going to help you know what to do as an intermediate artist to continue your training. And in case you guys didn't know, my name is Tyler Edlin. I've been a professional artist and instructor now for 10 years. And so guys, before we begin, let me know down below if you do consider yourself an intermediate artist and what is the strongest and weakest aspects of your art. Analyzing your own art is one of the fundamental key aspects of progressing further at this stage. So let's begin. And so the first phase is training fundamentals, you know, the grind. Phases two and three, and at least in my school, kind of happen around the same time. And in traditional art school, this will probably happen during, you know, semesters two or four, maybe even your second year entirely. But essentially what I recommend at this level is to kind of pull some time out of the grind and start putting that more so into study and research. Doing that, while getting out there and getting some life experience, whatever that may be. Maybe it's working, maybe it's spending time with certain people, maybe it's just, you know, literally the act of living. This is crucial for an artist's growth around this time. You'll be able to relate things back to fundamentals and observe your own reality to much different sort of levels that you can take back and then put into your studies. So for example, this is a great time and in art school this is when you start learning and taking art history courses. I never understood the significance of this at the time, but it is so important to enrich your art life with different parts of culture, with our history. It's going to build context. And I don't mean just learning about the old masters and what they did and how they did it. No, I mean, try to think about what you're generally interested in, whether this is illustration, cinematography, heck, maybe this is even fashion. And of course, for some of you, that's going to be fine art do some deep dives. One thing is going to lead to another. You're going to end up in this creative and historic, maybe even contemporary rabbit hole where you're just learning a lot of names and a lot of specializations too. You'll see what, what people are good at what. And you'll learn eventually too, if you're studying intently, why they're good at that. This is so important. Like I would never have learned about cinematographers like Roger Deakins or Imogene Cunningham just how they kind of shoot things, how they use angles, how they use light, right? This is all enrichment. We need enrichment. And if I never took that illustration history course way back in college, I never would have learned about artists like Arthur Rackham and N.C. Wyeth, which are kind of staples and historic figures for a lot of the contemporary artists and people on art station that I look up to today. All of this learning, it's going to basically improve your context and your understanding of the world. Your ability to kind of comprehend and understand things much more broadly is going to improve significantly at this time. It's not just about drilling perspective, color, and light assignments. You will be able to really see and think much more at an abstract sort of level. And basically what's happening here is you're going to be able to bridge the gap. You're gonna make connections between different things. When connections happen, you're gonna get inspired. You're gonna start wanting to create and innovate. And what's subtly gonna be happening in the back of your mind while you're creating art at this stage is that your awareness and decision-making skills, your moment-to-moment -moment choices during the course of a painting or drawing are gonna gradually start to increase. They're gonna be more effective and you're gonna have more information, more resources, more names to reference as you're trying to solve problems. So right, the first part of phase two here has been just learning, getting history, getting obsessive about what you're into. So guys, uh, tell me below, what are some subjects that you feel you need to read up on and research that'll indirectly impact your growth in your art? The, the second part, phase three, is actually just is purely what I refer to as the experimental phase, right? You get those experimental years in college, right? That's kind of the equivalent. So we're, we're taking what we're learning on the side and what we're diving into and we're experimenting. 
we're probably creating projects. I created a lot of projects, both big and small. One-off images to five to six string series of images to apply everything we're learning. Now here, like in the fundamental stage, there still is a large potential to fail and you should absolutely welcome that. Because essentially what I recommend a lot of student artists to be doing at this phase is to test out different processes. And when you're testing out different processes, you're channeling and testing your knowledge of the fundamentals. That's what it is. Your, your process is your organization and your use of the fundamentals of art and design. So don't worry about it if your style is not coming as quickly as you want it to at this phase. It should absolutely not. You shouldn't be thinking about style. You probably shouldn't even be focused on creating the most beautiful image you ever have at this stage. Just have fun. Paint. Explore. Draw. Create. Try creating an image just in black and white. Try creating an image black and white to color. Try just color. Try line. Try value. Try every kind of process you can research and, and experiment with. And of course you'll have a lot of ideas on that based on the research you've been doing along the side. Very few artists really actually work the same exact way after all. Now there's a notion out there as artists that we should probably find a specialization and just kind of hit that really hard and really fast early on. I think for some artists, few artists, that actually works, like you're going to be that portrait person in a certain style and you're just doing that, you're just doing you. And that's all you've ever done. But I think for most of us, allow me to speak for most of us, settling into a specialization at this phase and this early, I actually don't recommend. There are, of course, different fields where that is applicable, like Tiger Woods, he was a golfer since he was like two, but there's other golfers like Roger Federer, but you know, he was very competitive with Tiger Woods in their prime and he didn't specialize in anything early on. He did tennis, he did badminton, he did skateboarding, but he claimed all these other things he was doing and learning and experimenting with and just experiencing led to his professional golf skills. And it's, I feel the same way for art. So lots of style influences, lots of historic influences, and lots of exploration will lead to a route of expertise eventually. I, I'm a firm believer of that. that. That's kind of what I've done. So the bottom line here is for phase three, just have fun and create lots of art. And as long as you're learning on the side, it's gonna work really well. So guys, we've covered a lot in this video. If you got any value out of it whatsoever, please hit the like or subscribe button or leave me a comment if you have any questions about any of this. But just remember, you need to have patience, be fairly open-minded and embrace that curiosity. And the general process I recommend earlier on in our training as artists or creators is fundamentals, history and research, experimentation. As an intermediate artist, the more you experiment with different ways to build images and the broader types of images you, and subject matters and genres you approach, the better it is for you at this stage. Of course, over time from here, how you're taking these influences, how you're putting those into technique and managing them out through a process, it's gonna start to define you. That style and your artistic voice is gonna start to sing near the end of this phase. So guys, thank you for watching constant new streams of content dropping on my patreon like a, a forest demo and paint over this week and as well as a six part in-depth look at this painting that i've been working on it's massive it's in depth it covers a breadth of topics from start to beginner and it's absolutely perfect for those looking for an in-depth tutorial on my current process so guys thanks for watching subscribing and do take care